Welcome to another tutorial for Component Studio 2 Alpha. Today we're going to give you a system function and navigation overview. To start, head to Component Studio 2 by either clicking this link in Component Studio or by typing Component Studio slash V2 in your web browser. By default, you'll load in on your Games tab. If you already have games started, you'll see them appear in this list. You can search your existing games by name, and you can also choose to view archived or not archived games. You can use the Collaborations tab to search for other Component Studio users and add them to different games as collaborators so they can access and edit the content as well. You can use the green button up here to create a new game or select a game to load into it. This is the game page. You'll see the game name up here and navigation tabs on the left. We'll start at the bottom and work our way up. Under Collaborators, you can click this button here to add collaborators to your project. Under Exports, you'll see any saved export files for when you exported a design. In this example is a saved print and play file that I exported. Under Archives, you can view any archived files for this game here. In this case, it's an image export I did of the cards. Under Settings, you can change the name and mark the game as either archived or not archived, which controls how it shows up in the game's list. There's a notepad for you to take miscellaneous notes with. And under Font Palette, you can choose which fonts are available in your design. Selecting Add More Fonts will give you a list of fonts to choose from. The Datasets tab holds all the datasets in your design. You can edit them, adjust their settings, in this case just their name, duplicate them, or delete them. Use the Create Dataset button to create an additional dataset. Let's quick take a look at the contents of a dataset before we move on to designs. Here's your dataset. This is where you put all the information that will appear on your cards. Think of each row like a different card in a deck, and each column a different piece of information that would appear on that card. For example, a name, a card number, or a description. You can delete or copy a row using the icons on the left. Looking at the navigation bar on the top, we begin with the dataset button. This is going to show you all the variables created for use in this dataset. You can create a new variable using the information field at the bottom. You can choose to set enumeration for this dataset. The add button lets you add rows or columns. The CSV button is where you're going to import or export the CSV data. This is the Game Variable button. This shows you all the game level variables available to this dataset. Under Images is where you're going to add, edit, and sort your images for this game. If you have multiple image folders, you can select it here. You can delete the current folder with this button. You can edit the name of the current folder with this button. The green folder plus button will add a new folder. And on the end, you'll see the new button if you want to upload more images to this folder. Next to the images button, we have the styles button. This is where you're going to modify all the styles that are used to format your text. You can either modify the ones here or select this button to create a new style. On the right, you'll see your preferences. You can choose to remove the toolbar labels, which will simplify your UI. And you can choose your layer order, which will come into play when we're editing our designs. Let's go back to the game. Now lastly, we have the Designs tab. Each design is going to be a different kind of asset. In this case, we have a deck of action cards, and we have a design created for the different tokens that are going to appear in the game. For our example, 
Let's look at the action card. Starting on the toolbar on top, we have the navigator that lets us choose which card we're looking at. You can either choose one for the drop down, or use the arrows to toggle one card at a time. Select the overlay button to hide the ruler and guides that are hovering over the card. The color filter is a useful resource to not only get an idea of what your card might look like after it's been printed, because colors tend to shift in the print process, it also gives you a preview of what your card might look like to people who have certain kinds of colorblind vision. This can be useful to make sure that your design is readable, regardless if someone has a vision impairment. You can choose the zoom of the display here. Row data is a neat feature. This feature lets you see the data set information for the current card. You can even edit it from this screen so you don't need to flip back and forth between your data set and your design. For example, let's change this from move 1 to move 4. Our card automatically updates. You can even toggle between your different rows on your data set from this menu. Or like the other selector, use the drop down. If you want to add a new row to your data set, Select this button here, and a new blank row will be created that you can fill in on the spot. If you want to see your entire data set, go ahead and select this button, and a new window will open up with your data set in it. You can edit your data set just fine in either place. If something's not updating on your card right, select Reload Data Set and it'll refresh everything. The game button brings up the same game variables that we mentioned earlier when we were on the dataset page. You can access and edit them from here, just the same. The images and styles buttons are going to function the same here as they did before. Export lets you download the images of the card you're making. You can download current, download all, or choose to export your design. Currently. You can export it to an archive file, a print and play PDF, or directly to the Game Crafter for printing. Jump lets you navigate your design to whichever layer you select on. So, let's jump to the description text as an example. It brings us to the description text layer in the designer. If you have a particularly complicated design, this can help you with navigation. Now in Preferences, we can choose to render our layers from the bottom up or from the top down. This will change the order that Component Studio renders the images on the card. So if you watch our layers on the right, when I select top down, it will invert them. So it renders the background first going down to the title. Whereas if we have it at bottom up, the background is on the bottom and the render works its way up. Well, in the designer, you'll see your card preview on the left and then on the right is where you're going to edit all the assets on your card. Create layer group will create a new group for you to use. Then selecting the plus within that group will let you add an asset to that group. As you can see, there's a lot to Component Studio 2. We'll go through all these features bit by bit, but you should at least have a grasp on how to navigate the system. If you have any questions or specific areas you want tutorials on first, please leave them in the comments either here on YouTube or on the Component Studio Facebook group. I'd love to be able to feature some of your creations in my tutorials. So if you have an image or a design you'd like to share, Go ahead and go to that Component Studio Facebook group and post what you've made so we can see. But until next time, I'm Andrew Voigt, and this has been another tutorial for Component Studio 2.